Hey, this is Drake, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the M-Touch hardware panel and how it correlates with the software. Now, every hardware panel is a little bit different, but this one and the M2 Go, M2 PC are really close. They just have a few different things, so let's dive in and talk about this control service. So as you saw in the other videos, uh, these faders line up with the buttons on the screen, and these buttons uh, directly below and directly above are also tied into the fader. So you have your channel one, two, through 10 here. And then these buttons also allow you to store cues. Usually you don't use them for intensity or things like that because you, there's no way to control the intensity. You could do a zero to 100 or something on it, but you can use them for bumps and flashes and things like that over here. Um, and these four faders, I haven't gone over this very much, but you can actually control stuff in your programmer with these faders instead of using the mouse on the software if you want to. Um, and once you launch stuff into the programmer, these buttons allow you to cycle through the tabs. So you could fully work on this control surface in this area for your programmer here. And then you have things like record and clear that uh, are faster to use on this than a mouse. If ever you select something like I just did, you can just click clear and it goes away real fast and you have your highlight right above it. So if we're looking at our software here, you can see that I have uh, two different faders here, two different faders here, and one over here. I got three different types of uh, cue list basically, submaster, a cue stack, an override, and an inhibited fader. Uh, so let's look at our cue stack here. If we right click on our cue stack, it pops up this menu option right here. And if you cycle over to function assignments up here, this is your fader and button layout for that fader. So you can see that here's our fader, here's our bottom button, which is flash, and go slash pause back or up above. So the cool thing with this window is you can actually change what each button does. So for example, if I want the bottom button to be go instead of flash, I can just select the drop down and click go. And I might want the top button to be flash, so I could select that one and do flash here. So it gives you full customizability of this control surface and how you want to set it up for what you want to use it for. Usually, flash is at the bottom. It's been that way on a lot of analog consoles too, so I tend to keep flash down there. Um, and you can select go. It, it really depends on what you want to do. We can close out of that. Um, things like the submaster will not have those actions because you can't actually go and backslash pause a submaster. It doesn't do that. It only has intensity. So in this case, they're all flashes. Um, just in case you don't know what a flash is, a flash is usually if you push the button like this, the light turns on. You can use it for like bumps and things like that with the music. If you want to bump a bunch of fixtures to the beat instead of like throwing the fader up and down, you can just hit the flash. That's what that does there. And I was going to show you a little bit about the programmer here. So if we select our LED PARs um, and we bring up this menu, as you can see, the blue dot, I hope you can see that on this little square here showed up showing me that I have control right here and I can control my programmer. As you can see, if I'm moving this fader up and down, it's also moving the programmer on the console, changing the intensity of my LED par. Things like color, if I go to color now, all three light up because I have three different things that I can control. So I can get rid of red and I can get rid of blue and that gives us green, that type of thing. And you can control it here. It's a little bit more handy for pan and tilt type things um, with our vipers because I can go pan and tilt and I can actually pan them more precisely by moving this or tilt them. Same idea with this instead of using a mouse. The cool thing is, is that if you do have to use a mouse, if you use the scroll wheel on any of these windows in the right plane, it will move for you. It's just also very, very slow. Might be good, might not be good. It's what you're more comfortable with, but you can use the scroll wheel in these windows. And last but not least, we have these 10 buttons here and these 10 buttons here correlate to these 10 little squares on the screen right here. Um, you can store things like hues for color or things like that to here if you want to. 
So for example, we can take our LED pars. Let's give it a color of blue, which our fixtures aren't on. If I turned it on, you can see that it is blue. We can hit record. We can select color and we can select one of these buttons by either clicking on it or pushing the button here. So I'm going to push the button and it obviously brings up our window of what we want to save it as. So we're going to say LED par blue and we're going to save it as a cue list. Enter, clear, clear, clear. And as you can see, it recorded LED par blue right here. And uh, if I select that, it launched the queue. It's basically a go button. And as you can see, the LED part turned blue. And I still have control of the intensity on my fader that we made before right here. Um, you can store multiple different cues for multiple different colors or positions or anything to these buttons and launch them that way. It gives you quick access if you want little things uh, quickly at your fingertips right here. So that's a little more in-depth overview of how the control surface works with the software. If you want to get more in detail, make sure to check out our other videos.